Howdy everybody and welcome to another video with me. I'm Nick and this is London Creative. A couple of weeks back I posted a video about this thing, my little book nook library, and it was very popular. But if you haven't seen it, it's up there. So I did it and it was quite involved and quite long-winded, so I didn't make the little bits of furniture and the extras that it needed to be inside. So this week I'm gonna make an old chair. Something old dilapidated and kind of like somewhere to sit and while away the hours while you sit and read the thousands of books in the library let's get on so here we are here is as we left it and we're missing a chair in there so i need to figure out how big i've got random bits of foam and stuff i think i'm just going to use this stuff which was the mock-up for this in the first place That maybe a little bit smaller. I had walked that corridor a thousand times, a thousand ways, but never had I seen that door. But that day, it seemed to stand out, perfectly ordinary, perfectly plain, just a single flat panel of old lacquered wood. Except this one stood slightly ajar from the rest. I hooked my fingers through the edge of the wood. I felt the hinges give and the door became just that. The door allowed me access to what lay beyond. I pulled and the hinges creaked like an old crone crying out, finally giving up her secrets and revealing them to me. The creak of rust and metal rubbing echoed throughout the narrow walkway of the old house and beyond a wonder to my eye. As I stood between door and frame, I spied an old bookcase and another and another. Rows of them lined both sides of the narrow room. Another corridor of sorts, much like the one I just left behind. On both sides of the thin room stacked floor to ceiling from the entrance to the back wall and all I could see were books. Old books, new books, leather bound tomes with gold ornate script. Contemporary novels with colourful covers displayed and tucked away, wedged on top of each other. I dared to move crossing the threshold and into the secret world within. A floorboard beneath my unshoed foot groaned and creaked in protest as if agreeing with the old crone of a door that I was not meant to be there. This place was not mine. It was a secret not to be revealed. And yet, here I stood, my feet sinking into that old rug that run the length of Middle Eastern design all curls and ornate and the edges frayed and worn where they'd been kicked a thousand times. And perched over the far corner of that old dilapidated rug sat an equally dilapidated chair. A lounger, big and soft, with edges faded and rubbed away by hands gripping at them to stand. Faded red and white gingham, soft, comfy resting chair for a single bookworm to while away the day while nestled in. Fire blazing across on the other wall as it did now. A large stone surround glowing gently with the orange of the flame. And sat above it a gilded frame, tarnished and gold, rubbed at the edges. And within it a mirror, rubbed and polished so that the silver was missing on sections, giving it a speckled, mottled effect. But still managing to reflect my shocked and awed face. Upon the mantel stood just a single photo, angled at the door, as if it were there to welcome the occupant. And the girl in the frame, a stunning beauty warmed my heart as such as any firewood. Did I recognise the young face? As I searched about, I saw more photos, but also more. Upon the shelves where books were missing, there were curiosities. A human skull painted red in colour, like the blood had never dried upon it. A pair of huge jars stood as high as my knees and held within them rocks of many hues, and the other a pale, opaque liquid, maybe something more within. I did not care to find out what. High up, a 
and out of reach, a large red box caught my eye. An old puzzle or a device stowed away for safekeeping, and above the old chair, a stained glass window, admitting light, warm, natural evening light from the outside. And even though it was clearly the light of the setting sun, I was puzzled once more to know where this window lay on the outside wall. For I'd known the outside as I'd known the inner, and yet I could never recall seeing such a window from the exterior. Clearly, I knew nothing of this place. To the left, just past the window, a small flight of stairs led down and around and out of sight. Another warm glow of light indicated there was more to discover below, but my interest was piqued. One step down and at an angle, the final bookcase had one last mystery exposed to my eye. Yet another door lay just ajar in the bookcase itself. One book pulled out a lever, a latch, mechanism to release this secret and admit the passer through. My hand pressed and pushed, opening it just a little more to seek what I could find beyond. And I climbed through. To my ever-growing surprise, I was greeted by a stair. Long, tall, twisting spiral of wrought iron and wooden carved handles curved up to a light from a skylight above and clearly yet another undiscovered room. My feet were eager to seek out the next mystery, and in my haste to climb and to discover, and tripped awkwardly up the metal steps. What I discovered there is a whole separate story, one that I need to catalogue. But don't worry, I shall, in time, in time, I shall tell you what I found at the top of the spiral stairs. There we are, one old dilapidated sofa, or armchair it's a bit big for what it was meant to be but it works it's a it is that old worn out the arms are worn the, the covers are falling off and all of that but it, it suits that old wooden library and the perfect place to sit and tuck up your feet and while away the afternoon reading a big old book maybe one day that'll be my book but for now it still needs to be published so We'll come to that really when it happens. But yes, I hope you like this. I hope this was fun. My little sofa and the story that goes with it. And of course, that now leads to making other things like the staircase or the, the room at the top of the stairs. Maybe, maybe in time, maybe soon. So if you did like this, give it a thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. Tell me what you like. What If you've made this and you've got a picture of it, then put a link to it and show me or tell me what else to make or what to build. And if you like um, the diversity of this channel, two channels in for the price of one, two, nine, whatever, you know, in London, being creative, sometimes out walking, sometimes with a dog, sometimes cycling, climbing, who knows? All manner of diverse things, things that I'm passionate about, things that I like to do, things I like to share with you. So if this is entertaining and fun to you, and you like a bit of diversity, then go ahead and click subscribe down there, that little red button. Go, go and click. And then come back next week for something completely different. And so until then, I'm going to put the chair in the library and uh, go and read a book. Bye. Just to say, That's the noise I've been having to deal with while making this cushion. That's why uh, it was on music and muted. Because this is the general noise I have to listen to on a daily basis. This is a two-year-old child with a karaoke machine. And the people that own the child are oblivious to this noise. They don't think he's doing anything wrong. How many times I stick that together? Still keeps falling apart. Uh.